seeing an iPad kit, I'm like, wow, what job is he gonna have? He knows more about like, scrolling to the next video than like anything that will help him get a job. High schoolers are kids. Three, two, one. I feel like to say high schoolers in general are kids is almost like defeating the people who are in the min minority. Like for people like me who have grown up more um, just mature for my age and I guess fitting more an adult mindset. I feel like I can't say for myself that I'm a kid because I definitely make adult decisions time and time again. I mean, there are people who still have the mindset of kids, but I can't say high schoolers in general are kids. I feel like with high school, it's such a broad statement to say high schoolers because there's a giant difference between a freshman and a senior. Like it is, that's why like when they try to date each other, it's like, why is that 18 year old trying to date the 14 year old? Like it just doesn't make sense. I feel like it would be naive to ignore the fact that like, especially anyone who's a senior, they're about to be a legal adult. I think kids need mentoring. That's how I see it. I mean, adults too need mentoring, but I think kids need that extra help and that extra push. Well, I've seen many kids who have been forced to be older or act older as they are, to mature faster. I, that's why I went for a grief. I want to move. You want to move? Yeah, Can go I, for it. Okay, I Talk even know through. if I could. What are you thinking? Well, I agree. I feel like there's just so many decisions, especially in high school, that we have to make that are not like kid-like and they expect us to act a certain way and also like the fact that we're even able to drive, how should we still be considered a kid? Do you mind if I move? Yeah. <laughs> um, I moved because I feel like, especially at that 16 to 18 age, you're constantly planning for your future where it's actually difficult to live in your childhood. It's just kind of, you're unable to live as a child. So it's like, how can you consider yourself one when you're constantly planning for your adult life and future? When I was a freshman, all the teachers around me always told me that I needed to prepare for my future. And I feel like, especially coming after online school and quarantine, I'm still living in that middle schooler mindset. I'm still basically like a kid living and preparing for my future, which I'm clearly not ready for. I feel like kid is kind of a weird word. So like, it's just kid and adult. And I feel like in high school, you kind of want, I kind of want to be thought of as a kid because it's kind of like, oh, he's a kid, right? It's like, a, like an excuse almost, like you're allowed to mess up. I, I really can't like look at my classes full of 18 year olds and say, these are, these are adults. Like, I feel like now it's later and later we're turning into adults. I don't feel like we turn in, I mean, of course there's people that have to pay bills at 16, but to say a high schooler is an adult, I feel like I like to know that I can grow so much more from that. Like, oh, I did that when I was a kid, not, you know, as an adult. Today's high schoolers have it harder than previous generations. Three, two, one, go. I feel like now our generation, we have more resources for help that we need, you know? And way back then, like mental health, that was like, they would put you straight to camp or like right some camp. conversion, right. stuff like that. But I feel like now there's just more resources. We have the internet, we have the media. Like, would you have wanted to send a pigeon? to your friend instead of texting your friend like you know stuff like that like would you want to have you know we just have it easier now i feel like it's an in-between thing because i feel like social situations now are much better but back then they were much worse i feel like there was racism teachers could beat their own kids and i feel like now there's so much things that we cannot do and i feel like it's for the better can i move when i think about this question i kind of like went to bullying and how much easier it is to get bullied nowadays especially on social media because it's so easy to hide behind a screen people say worse things and i think that mental health maybe it was just as bad back in the day but because of social media it's become more prominent and we see it everywhere um another thing that i also thought about was you guys say that we have more resources but don't you well, you don't have to agree. But I feel that the resources have kind of made us a little less smart. Because we're able to look up that, like, the answers to our test, or like, I don't know, everything's just so much more accessible that we're, I'm not really learning as much as like my mom and dad did. So I kind of like, 
sad that all our resources are so much more accessible. Yeah, we, like, I know some dumb, you know? Yeah. People, like, know they're like, you, yeah. is it hot outside? And then they'll go to their phone and check the weather. Like, <laughs> just go outside, you know? I feel like school right now is so easy for our generation. Like, it is so incredibly easy. Like, especially now that I'm senior year, I mean, I'm not taking incredibly hard classes, but, like, they don't even give you homework because they know you won't do it. Yeah. Like, it's like, they would rather have you pass than, like, teach you something. And, like, the amount of kids that held back is, like, nothing. Like, it's just, oh, keep going ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And so, like, seeing, like, classrooms from, like, older generations, it seems like, oh, they're, like, learning. There's more respect to the teachers. Now, like, there's, like, such little discipline that every class is just, like, a muck. I feel like just because things are easier does not mean it's better. My friend goes to college in San Diego, and there's literally a group chat for people in a nursing major just to cheat on the work. And if we're having nurses that don't even know how to, like, give you medicine, stuff like that, it's scary. I did want to hit on how the pandemic impacted you guys. Yeah, I think it did impact our generation. I know personally, I was, I was always so great at talking growing up and then going into coronavirus, not really like talking to my friends a bunch and like being kind of like antisocial and to myself, coming out and having to talk to adults was like terrifying. I didn't want to do it at all. I, didn't, I couldn't even talk to like my peers. When I went back to school, I felt like I was still in eighth grade in middle school. So it was very hard for me to adjust. And this was definitely like the biggest change like that affected our generation, if you think about it. You know, we didn't deal with the bubonic plague or a big, you know, stuff like that. Like we, this was the biggest impact. And I remember going back to school, I was so anxious. Like I would take half a Xanax, you know, almost every morning because it was so bad. There was this day where we can finally take off our mask. And it was so weird seeing everyone, but I never knew what to do with my face. It was just crazy. I feel ready to explore my sexuality. Three, two, one, go. Uh. I don't know what that means. What is like dating and stuff? I knew I was gay at a very young age. Um, so I've kind of always been ready or kind of always known. Like I was over here at like six years old, like looking at a TV screen and there was like a boy and I was like, He's cute. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, I already knew. So like, I feel like it just depends what you determine what exploring your sexuality is. Cause at least in my book, I feel like I've already labeled it and I'm already confident and happy with who I am. Now it's very normal to explore yourself. And I think even just like having sex, it's very, very naive for any adult or anyone to ignore the fact that like, people are gonna do that. <laughs> like it's, 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 or people around you are gonna do that, they're gonna talk about it, or you're gonna see it on TV and with the internet, like we have access to everything these days. No one is judged like for waiting or wanting to try stuff, as long as everyone's being safe, as long as it's consensual, as long as you're okay, there's nothing wrong with it. I also grew up in a very private Christian school. It was very like, it was like a bubble, you know, and you know, we didn't talk about all that stuff, but now I attend a high school where we actually have wellness classes. Also, social media helps. Those random accounts on my For You page, they're like, how to kiss a boy or something like that. Oh, I don't even know. What is it, WikiHow? WikiHow, sure. Like, there's just so many courses, you know? That's why you gotta seek them out and find a support system. It's kind of like, for our whole generation, happening earlier and earlier, like, where we get introduced to it with, like, the internet and stuff. I kind of like it to be delayed. I kind of like to be a kid for as long as I can. But do you feel like people don't take you seriously if you continue to, you know, act younger and like want to be younger? In, in the sense of like this question, like sexuality, yeah. like I, I feel like I'd rather, because right now it's like most of the pressure is just like, oh, I feel like I'm so behind because I haven't done this, this and this yeah. yet, when it should be so normal. Yeah. It's important that we do educate ourselves on these topics because once we're older, if we aren't, that could take a turn for the worse. I feel like approaching it naturally or in a professional way, like in terms of like school, if they're providing like health classes, I think that's just the best way to go about it. And I completely agree with you. Like I was also exposed to nasty on the internet and like no one wants to go through that. I don't think that the school should do it because I think it's really weird. You know, I, I, I can never stop laughing personally. Like when I'm in the, a sixth grader and they say the word scrotum, how are you not supposed to like laugh? Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think it's more of a personal endeavor, but I guess no, not everyone's as smart as me, but <laughs> I feel like personally, I'd just like to find that out on my own and maybe be encouraged by the school, but I don't like the classroom. Let's learn about sex 
all, all sitting together as a bunch of teenagers. Like, that sounds, that's awful. That's like the worst thing ever. I feel safe at school. Three, two, one, go. My campus security are amazing. Um, they have a personal relationship with all the students. I've had bomb threats at my school. I've had like shootings literally walking distance down the street where the school had to go on lockdown. It's unfortunate, but also like it just makes me really aware. Like for every classroom, I have what's my hide plan? Who are my people? I don't feel comfortable putting my phone in the phone chart because if something happens, I want to text my family. And that's why COVID like lifted a lot of weight off my shoulders because I didn't have to worry about that all the time. Um, also, like a lot of people at my school who have mental health struggles, um, I'm always afraid that like someone won't be properly treated for that and then they'll just snap one day, you know? My school has had multiple sexual assault scandals. Um, like my history teacher right now, my world history teacher, if it weren't for the current sub, it would be with basically a pedophile. So it's, it's scary. And when she mentioned like the bomb, I think I remember last year, someone created an account with our school name and it was like shooting or something on this day. And our school ended up canceling school for that day. And it was horrible. I feel so fortunate to have grown up in a really privileged area where there's not a lot of violence. However, I feel like I'd be ignorant to say that a school shooting would never happen. Because all it takes is one kid out of the 2,500 students that I have to take a gun to school and shoot people. And I feel like there's so many different openings on my campus where that could happen. We have gates, but it honestly looks like a prison. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's me too. I won't lie. <laughs> um, we have security guards. They're not armed, uh, which was a conversation that came up. Should our security guards be armed? And another conversation came up. Should our teachers be armed? You know, there's just topics like that. I remember when, this was actually recently, um, one of the old students at the college um, threatened to shoot up the whole school, and so even we had to go remote, so it's just like, never feel safe. My social media presence is important to me. Three, two, one, go. I don't particularly post, like maybe just my story, you know, but like I'm not like constantly posting, and if you do, that's perfectly fine. Like that's a lot of people's outlets, and especially creatively. I don't own a single social media, and like like not as like a flex. I'm just saying like I I hate the the presence of an app in my mind. Like oh, you should do this. Like it's a it's an app on my phone. Like I don't want to give it any part of my life. So I'd just rather not have it. I think sometimes with social media nowadays, it also can fall into career, which is really weird, but that's like what I do. It's like, oh, I can't post that picture of me like flipping off the camera with my friends because like a college or a, a future boss because your digital footprint is so real. But I also like, I love having social media. Like I've had it for years. I've always like tried to ground myself and realize that it's just for fun. It's not that serious. There are some people who I know who have like shown or done some really crazy stuff and it's spread everywhere. Like there's some things I do not need to know and people just tell me. Like, on Instagram there's like close friends and there's like normal story mm -hmm. and I post on close friends so much more than I do on my normal story. Or like a spam account. Yeah, yeah, yeah I exactly. post on my spam account yeah. like way more. A couple of years ago, I would have been right there like on the strongly agree, you know, like cause when I moved to the new school, a lot of people were like, oh, how many followers do you have? If you had over a thousand, it's like, yo, you got clout, like you, you're good. Digital footprint, that is no joke. Mm -hmm. Like everything you post will come back at you. I'm so glad Instagram took off that feature where you could see what other people liked. Do y'all remember that? That was ridiculous. That's why I'm very aware of what I post. I make sure this is what I want everyone to see. And yet when yes. you're, I'm so sorry. When you're a kid, like you want social media, like when you first find out about it, like when I was nine years old, I was like begging my mom to let me have Instagram. And now like I'm even embarrassed of like the little like selfies I would post because like they're so stupid. So like looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, I would totally never let like my seven year old on social media, like, you know, things like that. Um, but I actually did have social media very young. Yeah, me too. Um, I got Twitter when I was six. My, yeah. my mom made it and managed it, yeah. but I would still like, I would tweet about like my little kindergarten like crushes. <laughs> you like having your mom like to like, um, guide like the account. I feel like I didn't have that, unfortunately. So um, I feel like it just depends, like your digital footprint could be much more harmful, like when you don't have parents that 
know how to handle social media or know how to prevent it. Because my parents, they've never used social media. They don't have a single account. So growing up, like begging, I don't think they knew the harmfulness of it. And I don't blame them for that at all. But I feel like that's what led to me being exposed to a lot of stuff. So I feel like definitely with the new generation and if I don't know if I'll have kids, but if I do, <laughs> they're not on social media, at least for me. One of those iPad kids, I mean, those Ooh. kids who use iPads, it's My so an iPad kid. addicting. It's mm -hmm. so addicting. And you need parental controls because social media is crazy. Like, or having your parents run the account, regardless, it's just so, that's so important. Or even having influencers like Andrew Tate who are like influencing these like right. little like little boys kids, yeah. to think that that mentality is like normal. Yeah. I feel like social media has drastically altered my personality, especially during COVID. And I feel like if it could change me that much, just imagine a six year old having access to a phone for their basically entire childhood. But like, honestly, I got so sensitive to being on, in front of camera that I feel like I kind of forgot about digital footprint and stuff like that. I have hope for the future. Three, two, one, go. I don't know, man, seeing an iPad kid, I'm like, wow, what job <laughs> is he gonna have? You know, I mean, he knows more about like scrolling to the next video than like anything that like will help him get a job. I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like I have very much hope for our and the next generations as like, I feel we keep getting like, the younger generations kept getting like, like profited on and like abused almost. When I heard this question, I kind of thought about like, so, like social justice and like the issues that we're experiencing right now. Like there can be a change. And I just really don't think that people back in the day were seeing that type of change. Everything was just thrown kind of under the rug, not really spoken about. I still love to dream like, oh, I would love to achieve this one day, but even if I don't have that financial capability, I still have hope. I hope I could get there one day. And I still try to remain positive. Everyone's goal at the end of the day is just to be happy in what they're doing and make a difference in either your own or someone's life. And I think like, just by having this discussion, like, there's so much hope for everyone in here to go on and be successful in that, no matter what it is. So I have a lot of hope for the future, and I'm really excited, even though I'm nervous and I'm anxious about a lot of it, I'm really excited to see, like, in my personal life, like, what that means for me. Because um, I know I'm never gonna stop until I'm happy with what I'm doing. I mean, I feel really grateful for our generation because a lot of us are very open-minded to having these types of conversations, whether or not it relates to us or exists in our nature. But I feel like people are so open to change now. And I feel like that's just great moving forward. And I feel like a lot of us Gen Z people have gone through such traumatic and bad experiences that we're gonna become amazing parents one day. Like, I think I remember like during quarantine, there was like a sign in New York that said we had like, this many years left and before our world like ends or something. And my sister is an iPad kid and I've seen like, I've seen how she is. And it's like, I, I don't, I wanna say I have hope for the future, but just based off what I'm seeing, it feels like there's no change, kinda.